Hello everybody and welcome back to the Technical Effects YouTube channel. I'm James and it's a pleasure to have you here and as I'm sure you've established by the title in this video, we're going to be talking about imbalance and how I use imbalance uh, in my trading. Now, I actually have two ways that I use imbalance, um, but I'm going to be sharing one way um, in this video and also giving my take on what imbalance is. Um, now, I learned imbalance from a friend um, quite a few years ago, um, and it resonated with my trading, so I incorporated it. I then later come to find out that it was... Um, created uh, the concept by Michael from ICT. So I did reach out to him before doing this video and he was okay with me to share my take on it. That's why I've not really done any videos in the past because I'm not really here to teach other people's concepts. But if he give me the go ahead, I will obviously share how I use it. Um, and I've been using it successfully the way I do. Other people may have their take on it. You know, there is many different tools that you can use in the market. Um, and people use them different. Um, and this is how I use it. So uh, let's get into it, how I use imbalance um, part one. So let me just change the screen. Okay, apologize there, uh, click the wrong button. So first of all, um, let's take us into the bearish imbalance, okay? So when the market takes a move, we often see the market pull back up and fill the orders that have been um, executed. So balancing the orders, okay? When we end up with a gap in price, this is an imbalance in orders and price often will come back there to rebalance the market before continuing, okay? So we use it, or I use it and teach my students to use it, um, as an area of interest, we do obviously have another way that we do use it as well, but in this I'm going to be talking about using it as an area of interest for price to return to, to balance the markets, to then take a move continuation. Um, and I'll also be, we'll walk through Euro USD on the daily time frame and just take a look exactly what I mean. And then you guys can go through the time frames because it happens on obviously every time frame. Um, now, let's take a look at this move right here okay so we saw price we saw price push up push down push down push down during this period of this candle right here we saw price come back up and close the gap that price left within this candle if we take a look up here we'll be able to see that from the bottom of this candle okay to this area right here the top of this open there is a gap which has not yet been filled okay and that there is a gap of imbalance. I like to see it when we obviously have a nice momentum candle and we see, of course, continuation and price can obviously come back into the imbalance. We are, of course, looking at lower time frames and confluences at these areas, which I'll cover in a moment. Um, but this is like a, an area of interest for us to see price potentially come back to, to balance the market. So it would look something like this, price coming back up, tap into this area, potential lower time frame shift, et cetera, and then see the market continue lower if we was, of course, uh, bearish. So this area here would be balanced, okay? So this here would be balanced, and this here is an area of imbalance that price could potentially retrace into. Taking a look at a bullish example, okay? You can see here where these wicks meet, this is balanced, okay? So price here um, has come down and closed this gap of price, however, left behind this area here of imbalance. Let me just draw it on between that high and this wick right here. Okay, so this body and this candle here, you need three candles to be able to see imbalance, three candle closes, and it's the gap left behind, um, as you can see. Now, sometimes the gap may not be filled. Sometimes it will be partially filled. Sometimes it'll be fully filled. Um, we don't know. Uh, that's why we let the market dictate and we react to what the market does at these zones. Okay, so I do have a um, resource in our free um, Discord channel, which you can go into by clicking the link in the description, um, which will have a diagram, which will literally just show difference between balanced market and imbalanced, uh, literally just like this. Um, so you can tell the difference now. Okay, now we I believe that we should go into uh, the live charts. Uh, don't know why we were loading, but here on the daily time frame. Okay, uh, now, first of all, let's just quickly um, 
establish something. So when, when I'm looking for imbalance, okay, um, it is within a trading range. So I'm looking for it within a trading range as an area of interest that price could potentially um, return to. So if this here was a lower high point and this here was a lower low point and I would be looking anywhere between this leg right here for an area of potential imbalance that price could potentially come back into. Okay, so it may be there, for example, and we may then see price trade back into it, and then we'll be looking for lower time frame um, confluences or shifts to enable us to be able to see continuation. So it's an area of interest. Now, what could we also use as area of interest? We could use previous structures. It could potentially align at previous structures. We could put a fib on here from 100% into 0%, and the area of um, imbalance may align with the 61.8 retracement. OK, so again, it's just an area of interest that we use. We don't just set orders at imbalance. I don't want people to just be uh, going through and literally setting orders at imbalance. Um, I don't think that's a good idea. Um, so let's just take a quick run through. Um, let's just pick here, for example. OK, so taking a look between this trading range right here um, between this low and this high so we're on the daily time frame but it does form on all time frames of course so you can see here we broke this low confirming this lower high this lower low right here and if once price started to retrace and i was looking for my areas of imbalance uh, what can we see is right here a okay, case so, whoops that's the wrong tool uh, we can see right here we've got this gap okay so between there and there we've got an area of imbalance there is actually a little bit um, of imbalance that was left behind up here, quite a small bit. But you can see here how this candle did come back up and close quite a bit of bit of the imbalance there, like straight after. So we pulled back. We didn't close it all, but we closed quite a bit. Here we actually, the imbalance was actually here. Okay, so sorry, uh, on the wick of this. So we did close some of it here, continued down, came back up, formed equal highs at the imbalance, pushed lower, swept those equal highs. Again, you can see we pushed above it and then we continued lower. So it would be an area of interest where we would be looking here on the lower time frame for obviously what we look for our setup here at Technical Effects. Then if we just take a look at the next trading range, okay, so we broke this low, we've got a new high and then we create this low here. Now here in this move, there is lots of areas of imbalance. So you can see I'm marking them on right now, okay? Lots of different areas um, of imbalance, some larger than others, okay? As you can see, so we've got many areas that price could potentially retrace to, but that's when we start to, of course, stack our confluences of where price could potentially uh, look to come into. So uh, we can see that price did actually come and close all of this imbalance here and actually came into the 50% retracement. Uh, also had daily equal highs resting along here, when it took them out and we then had lower time frame confirmation in here of price looking to head lower. Now there is of course weekly imbalance so you can be looking at weekly time frame. Uh, price may have actually also come into a weekly area here. There could also be four hour. Um, here price um, broke this low. Okay, It's not always going to come into an area of imbalance. We had imbalance right here. Price literally blew straight through it. No reaction. Um, we never broke this high. We only wicked it. Um, and then we saw price come to the downside again break this low okay um now i believe in here we'll take a look in a minute but i believe maybe in here there is um four hour imbalance we had a bit of a gap here which ended up sort of closing this imbalance area that we did have here but i believe there could be on the four hour here you can see that there was uh some imbalance but it was left behind which is fine again we would be looking at our areas of interest so if we look at maybe if there was imbalance here on the lower time frame price is coming back into previous structures sweeps this liquid liquidity and also taps into that you could have a fib from 100 percent into your zero percent Again, building your area of interest. And then what do you see? Price push up and then moves all the way down to the downside. Um, taking a look lower, breaking it down further. Again, this is just on the daily time frame. We have, this is on every trading range. So if we was on the one hour time frame, say the daily's bearish, the four hours bearish, the one hour's bearish, and I'm really heavily on sales and I'm focused on that one hour time frame trading range, um, then I'll be looking just for one hour time frame imbalance really right within that one hour time frame trading range that price could of course come back up into show us our uh, what we're looking for on the lower time frame and then look for the uh, move lower again it doesn't have to be lower time frame this one hour range could be pretty good you may get one hour time frame um, entry here to the downside to then obviously move on and break this low so it really depends obviously what time frame you are on to what area of interest you would be looking for um 
Uh, we then break this low here. We have this high. There's a little bit of imbalance resting right there. Price does what? Comes directly back into it, closes it as you can see right there, closes it. There's actually lower time frame liquidity in here. So let's just mark on the actual gap of imbalance there. There was some actually a bit lower here also. Okay, so this is where, of course, it's not just about setting an order at imbalance and thinking that that's the way forward. Uh, imbalance has other names as well. Some people call it, I believe Michael calls it fair value gap. Um, and I believe there's also um, inefficiency. Um, but shout out Michael for um, creating this concept it is a great, great concept um, to use as an area of interest. Um, and if we just take a look here, what happened, we had a low price reacted to this low in a bearish market enticing buyers. But this here was a heavy move to the downside that left a lot of imbalance behind. OK, you can see here how price isn't filling this gap. What does price do? Comes back and fills it. It left behind this right here. That's no problem. We can watch what happens on the lower time frame in here to tell us when price is ready. If we didn't get our uh, confirmation here on the lower time frame, price may have looked to have come higher. Right. And that's where, of course, we wait for the market to dictate. Now we literally get to current price and we obviously have this lower low point down here. Um, so far, we've closed this minor area of imbalance right here. We've also closed a bit of this imbalance right here. There is still some uh, rest in here. We've swept some equal highs. Uh, there was actually a short position in here um, yesterday uh, to the downside, but price has taken a bit of a retracement today. We could push higher. Um, we'll have just to see how obviously lower time frames move forward from here, but that's not really what we are here to uh, break down. Um, we're here more so looking at areas of imbalance. So just to recap for you guys um, it is where price of, uh, leaves behind um, a gap and we don't get a wick back up filling um, the imbalance and then price um, fills it. And we see, of course, confluence areas uh, as well. So let's just take a look, for example, at a confluence area right here. Um, if we was to use a fib from this high right here into this low, okay, and we take a look at this um, imbalance area resting, let me just highlight it, this imbalance area resting right here, okay, that price came into, as I mentioned, aligns with previous structures, also aligns with the 50% retracement area. So it's not just the imbalance, we've also got previous structures and also support because price showed a reaction here to entice buyers before the fall through. Um, so price coming back into here is a really nice area of interest. So what I would suggest you guys to do is go into the lower time frames and really study the shift that happens in here. And then price obviously coming back before that continuation move lower. Um, but yeah, that is how I see imbalance. Now, I will do a part two. If you guys enjoyed this video, um, let me know in the comments. Do, of course, like um, and subscribe. Um, but if you've enjoyed this, then I will show you how I also use it as uh, within a strategy called the daily candle retracement that I use. Um, so do let me know. And obviously, don't just use this in the live market off the back of me, guys. Go back through the market and test it with structures accordingly gather data, okay, gather data so that you can have trust in it, all right, uh, you may see other people using it differently, but this here is how we use it here at Technical Effects, I appreciate you tuning in, thank you very much, please do like, comment, and subscribe, guys, that's everything from me, have a great day.